Hello, my name is Matt Max, and welcome to Let's Build Diaries. This is a complimentary series to my Let's Builds, where I will talk about all the things that do not fit the Let's Build formula. The Let's Builds are meant to teach specific things, whereas the Let's Build Diaries will focus more on practical things, like which tools do I use, what are my thought processes behind design decisions, all of those things that don't really teach you how something works, but they teach you the design process or they give you an insight into the design process of something as complicated as, for example, an 8-bit computer. Now, I want to preface this with, I'm not an expert. I actually do not know what I'm doing, right? I never, I, I'm not a person that learns everything about something and then goes ahead and, and does it. You know, those people in the internet that learn everything about how to build a kitchen and then build a perfect kitchen. I'm not one of those people. I'm like, I want to build a kitchen and I just do it. And of course, the first couple of things I built for the kitchen suck, but I learn from the experience. I'm a hand, hands-on guy, so I'm not an electrical engineer. So do not take what I talk about here as fact, right? It's more about my experiences and uh, I will report on problems that I encounter and how I solve those problems. And maybe you can learn something from that as well. So today I want to talk about how to actually realize the 8-bit ALU that I showed you in the last episode. Something like this, you cannot just build uh, on a breadboard, right? And you have to think about how do I actually wanted want to build it because it's really complicated it's a really big and complicated schematic as you can see here so i cannot just go ahead and just build it this needs planning and i have to think ahead of how to actually how to actually realize it first of all i want to say that i switched to eagle this is a free version of eagle but it does everything that it needs to do before i used KiCad. the reason i switched to eagle is this Basically, uh, this is a board, so this is the actual PCB, and that's not the final layout, it's just all the ICs thrown together, because otherwise Eagle Flex just won't work, I don't know why. So, uh, those are all the connections between the ICs, those are the actual ICs, and you can actually go ahead and route all those connections yourself, or you can let the machine do it if you want to. Now, the reason I'm using Eagle, uh, KiCad has this too, but Eagle directly imports the schematics. So, for example, in the schematic, um, the output is connected to a 4 or a gate. If I have this here, right, if I put this connection in here and then switch into the board view, it will be in here right away. For example, here, this is a 4 or a gate, and here you see a connection between this pin and this pin, and bam, I just rooted the connection to the output, right? It's that easy. KiCad also has this view, but it does not import directly from the schematics, so you basically have to draw twice. You have to draw the schematics in the schematic view, and then you have to do this all by hand. So that was too complicated for me, so I decided, you know what, I just use Eagle instead, it's free. Like, the free version is free. <laughs> and the free version does everything I need. So. By now you're probably asking, you know, why do I actually need this? So why, why do I need this? Well, this is a really complicated schematic. You see there are a lot of ICs, you see there are a lot of connections. I cannot really build this on a breadboard. It would be really, really inefficient to build it on a breadboard. To give you an idea, this is half of what you've just seen. Okay, this is half of what you've just seen. But all the ICs are already on there, um, you know, the cables are not all plugged in yet. But you see that the breadboard is basically full, and this is only half the ALU. So putting a full 8-bit ALU on here would be a total nightmare to do. And it wouldn't look very good, and I want to use this breadboard for development and not for basically production. So I somehow need to put this on something else on a breadboard. And basically, there are only two different things you can do. You can either put it on a Vero board. A Vero board is basically a board that has holes in it every 2.54 millimeters. 
because this distance between two of the pins is 2.54 millimeters or one tenth of an inch. That's just a standard, international standard for electronic things, right? This is 2.5 millimeters, this is 2.5 millimeters, and so on, right? It's, it's just a norm. You also uh, call this 100 milli inches. Okay, one tenth of an inch or 100 milli inches. So a Vero board just has tons of those holes in 100 mil distance, distance to each other. And that means you can just plug all those ICs in and solder them on. And then you can do all the connections, usually with silver wire. And you do those connections usually in 90 degree angles with a silver wire. You do it in 90 degree angles because the holes are in a, in a pattern, right, that makes 90 degree angles. So by going 90 degree angles, you can solder at every corner so that the silver wire is actually fixed to the board and doesn't wobble around. Now, the problem with that is that this right here is very complicated. Again, it's had so many connections that it will be nigh on impossible to do it on a Vero board. Think about doing all of this with silver wire. You have to measure the silver wire, you have to cut the silver wire for every single connection, then you have to sole it in place. It's a lot of work. It's a lot, a lot of work, and it's not easy to do, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's just too much work, so what else can we do if we cannot use a Vero board? Oh, and besides, uh, you see how there are connections going in between the, those uh, pins? That won't work on a Vero board either. Right, you cannot put a, ma a silver wire in between two of those pins because you can o only solder it here or here. And that's really bad. Oh, and you can only solder at the bottom. You cannot solder at the top. So making a 90 degree angle at the, on the top side is also not really possible. So that means a Vero board doesn't work and that means you actually have to go ahead and etch your PCB. You can either do this yourself or you can make a board layout like this then save it and then you send it off to a manufacturer and the manufacturer will add it for you and it will, he will drill all the holes for you. That's about 40 euros for a double-sided board. Or you can add it yourself. To add it yourself, you only need a 3D printer, which I have, and a clothing iron, which I don't have, but I believe a metal plate and a torch will work as well, and hydrochloric acid, which I also have. Don't ask. So I could edit it myself, but this thing is multi-sided. This, this thing is two-sided. It has bottom connections, the blue ones, and it has top connections, the red ones. And whenever a red connection goes into a blue one, or the other way around, there's a wire, there's a hole in the board so that the connection can go from top to bottom. And also, all of those right here, those are holes as well, because the pins of the ICs have to somehow fit through. Now that is a problem, because if you want to have a top and a bottom layer, a double-sided PCB, and you edge it yourself, the top and the bottom layer have to be perfectly aligned so they meet at these holes. If the top layer, if this blue line would be, uh, would be here instead, they wouldn't meet, right? The red line and the blue line wouldn't meet. And that is only uh, 25 milli inches, this distance, so that's 0 0.35 millimeters. 0.35 millimeters and it won't work anymore. So doing this precisely, etching a double-sided PCB so precisely that you can do the wires, difficult. I guess it's possible, I've never done it. I guess it's possible to do it at home, but there's an even bigger problem with, with doing it yourself at home. And the reason for that is drilling all the holes in the first place. What you see right here are about 800 holes. Every single, single one of those is a hole. Those are all holes. We can actually go into statistics and look. We have uh, 578 drill holes. So we might end up with 600 because, you know, there are some connections, those brown lines that aren't connected yet. So about 600 drill holes, that's a lot. And all of them has to be really precise. Uh, the distance, like the, the diameter of one of those drill holes is 0.75 millimeters. So it's pretty small. And you have to be really, really precise with all those drill holes, like one tenth of a millimeter precise. If I would have a Dremel, I could repurpose my 3D printer, put a Dremel in my 3D printer, and my 3D printer would then act as a CNC mill and drill all the holes for me. 
but I don't have one. So I cannot do that. I cannot modify it. So it's impossible for me to drill 600 holes that precisely. So that leaves me with what? Either I pay 40 euros for this PCB, which might not even work because I haven't tested it yet, or <laughs> there is another variant. There's another variant. We could use a Vero board, and now you say, you just said we couldn't. We could use what I call the hobo method. So usually when you build a Vero board, you have those 90 degree angles of wire on your Vero board, and that works fine. But what you can do instead is you can solder in all your ICs, you can do some connections with the silver wire, usually power connections, right? Plus five volt and ground, because that is needed everywhere. And then you use normal wires to connect the two points you need to connect directly. So you don't actually solder the, uh, the connections, all the routes directly onto the Vero board. You use normal wires to connect two points. And that might sound really chaotic, but it's, for a prototype, it's actually quite good, I think. Again, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I might be wrong on this, right? But if I make a mistake on a Vero board, on a standard Vero board, I can unsolder the silver wire. Okay, fine, it's a little bit of work. If I make a mistake in a PCB that has etched, etched copper, right? I cannot just reroute this connection. This connection is there, full stop, right? Maybe I can use my Leatherman to, to make sure the connection doesn't connect anymore, but it's really difficult to, if you have a mistake in your PCB layout, you're fucked basically, right? It's really difficult. Whereas when you do the hobo method and you have a mistake, you just unsolder a wire and that's it, right? That's it, no damage done, it's really quick. It's easier to, to troubleshoot and it can be clearer as well because you can use different colors of wire for different purposes. And finally, it's also really cheap. A Vero board that's big enough for all of this is maybe four euros and 40 meters no, not 40, 10, 10 meters of wire is 70 cents. So it's really cheap. It's the cheapest method. And I believe it's the best method for actually building a prototype. Still, before I will go ahead and actually build this on a Vero board and install it all in place, I will do a prototype on my breadboard. So this is a 4-bit ALU. This is just to see whether or not the schematic is actually correct and works, right? And when once this works, I will go ahead and we'll go by the Vero board and then I will actually solder the 8-bit ALU. And then we will see us again for the next episode of my Let's Builds. My name is Matt MadMax. Thanks for watching this video. Please let me know in the video description whether or not you thought this was interesting info or not. And tune in next time.